Good morning. How are you guys doing today? So you might notice we are now in chapter 13. We're kind of switching around a little bit. This again is one of those units I wish I had you in school for. It's so much fun to work on, but unfortunately we're not. Uh, I know. I would so much rather be in with you guys um, than having to do these videos and having to see you, me in the screen. That's okay. It's always there, but whatever. Um, so we are going to start working on graphing linear equations, okay? And that is a huge concept for pre-algebra. It's a big one once you get to algebra when you are in eighth grade with Mr. Litvak. Um, so let's get started with it. So what is a linear equation? All right. If you look at the word linear, you notice there's four letters in the beginning of the six-letter word, and it says line, lina, okay? Linear is just an equation whose graph is a line. That's it. Nothing very complicated. Um, there's lots of different equations that you can have, um, but only one of them produces a line, hence a linear equation. Okay. Um, stuff we've been looking at with uh, COVID-19, that is not a linear equation. That is totally different, um, but that's something you'll cover when you get a little bit older. Okay. So each point that is on the line is what's called a solution or what's known as a solution. Now there's an infinite number of solutions um, on each line. Okay, we tend to just deal with the easy ones, the ones that have, for the most part, uh, a whole number x coordinate and a whole number y coordinate. Um, but there's an infinite number that you can deal with. All right, so let's look at one. What is a linear equation? How are we going to solve them? Not overly complicated. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this equation y equals x plus one. So if you guys remember on a coordinate grid, the X is always the horizontal, the Y is always the vertical, okay? And X is what's called your independent variable, which means that changes. And then Y is a dependent variable, which means it, its change is dependent upon the independent variable's change. Okay, so X, um, how X, cha X changes totally depend, makes Y change in a very specific way. So in order to do it, basically what we're gonna do is we'll just Choose a number for x, solve for y. So we like to choose negatives. Um, zero is always a great number to choose because it's zero. It's not very complicated. Um, and then a positive number. So this one was just negative one, zero, two. It does not always have to be these. You'll see this as we go on. So if I plug negative one into this equation, negative one plus one is zero. So when x is one, y is zero. So this would be a solution to the equation, negative one, zero. If I plug zero in, <clears throat> If I plug zero in, zero plus one is one. So when X is zero, Y is one. So that solution would be zero, one. Last one in this case is two. If X is two, two plus one is three. All right, so it would be two, three. And then what we do to graph it is on your coordinate grid, super easy. We would just have your X and your Y coordinate and we label. Now you don't always have to label every number, you can do every other. But then what you do is you just plot these points. So I'd plot negative one, zero, zero, one, two, three. And then I just draw a line connecting those three points. Okay. Not very complicated. We're going to get a little bit more of this. This is going to, this is going to last a couple of days. Today is very basic. Oh, here's an X coordinate. Solve for your Y, put it on a graph. Pretty much done. Okay. So now let's try it for Y equals negative two X plus one. So again, um, same points as last time. Doesn't have to be. I just chose to do it. Not a big deal. So we have negative one. We always want to have a negative and a positive, and we want to try zero. Zero is an easy one because um, anytime you plug it in here, you just get this number, whatever it happens to be. So it's nice. It's something called a y-intercept. We're going to cover that in a couple of days. So if I plug in a negative one here, so negative two times negative one would be positive two. Positive two plus one is positive three. So when x is negative 1, y is 3. Now we come here. If we plug in 0, you can see how easy the multiplication is. 0 plus 1 is 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. And then we come here. If we plug in 2, if negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So 2, negative 3 would be a solution to this equation. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try to graph this. Now, sorry my lines are not perfect. It's really hard to write with a mouse. If you've never tried it on a Jamboard, open one up. It's tough. Okay. So 
each one of these lines is going to be worth one. Now, normally you would write that in there. I guess I will. I'll do every other, um, only because this is so hard to do. I'll do that as two and four. See, I, I totally missed a line right there. Okay. Yeah, grid paper is a nice thing to have for this. I'm just going to put negative two and negative four. Same thing here. Negative two, negative four. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is plot point negative one, three. So here's negative one. Here's three. Make my doll. If you know what, let me change colors so you can see it better. There we go. Next one is 0, 1. So here's 0, 1. Make my point. Next one is 2, negative 3. So x is 2, y is negative 3. All right, now's the fun part. Let's see how well I can do this with the mouse. All we do is draw a line connecting these. Yeah, that's not so bad. It's pretty much a line. Okay. I'd do it much better if I was on a using a piece of uh, grid paper because I'd have a nice little ruler to help me. But anyway, so you plot the points, connect them in a line. Pretty easy. Now, if it doesn't become a line, that means you made a mistake for right now. Okay. That means you made a mistake in a calculation somewhere or a numbering issue somewhere. All right. That's just a nice little hint. Let's look at another one now. Now, if you notice, this one has a fractional number in front of a fractional coefficient. Now it has a name. We're going to get to it in a couple of days. Okay. A couple of classes. So it's negative one half times X. So whatever my independent variable is, okay. Whatever my that number is, I'm going to multiply it by negative half and then I'm going to add two to it. All right. So can I choose any number for X? Of course I can. But I'm not going to choose an odd number because it's going to make my life a lot harder. Let's just say I chose one. All right, if I plug one in for x, x times negative a half, one times negative a half is negative a half. Negative half plus two is negative one and a half. You don't want to deal with fractional um, or you know, non-integers for um, your points. Can you do it? Yes, of course you can, but it's a lot easier just to do this, All right? So I'm going to choose only even numbers. So I chose negative two and positive four. Obviously, zero is a nice one. You can keep zero in there. So when you go through and you calculate, okay, that's negative one, it's positive one plus two is three. That's uh, zero plus two is two. And then that's negative two plus two is zero. So these are gonna be the points that I have to graph on my chart, okay, on my graph. So here are the points, all right? So I'm not gonna label them with the numbers here. You would do that only because I'm doing it on here. It's just to do. Okay. Negative two, three. So here's negative two up three. One, two, one, two, three. Here's my first point. Next one is zero, two. So zero, two. And the last one is four, zero. So one, two, three, four. Is that right? Yes. Now what do I do? Connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots somewhat straight. Okay, there we go. It's pretty close. Um, there's your line. Okay, so all we did was picked three points, solve them for, um, you pick three x variables, three x, sorry, three values for x, a negative, zero, and a positive, solved for y, plotted the points, and then we drew our straight line. So what happens if the line is horizontal, okay? The equation is going to look a little different. So if you notice in the first two, we always had an, a y and we had an x. There happened to have been a plus or a minus. You don't have to have the plus or the minus. That doesn't always have to be there. Um, but, you know, what happens if it is just a straight horizontal line? It's going to look very different. So the equation is not going to have an x. Now, it really does. We're going to cover that probably next lesson um, about what it really is. Um, but we're just not going to write it. It's not going to be there. Again, a lot of it has to do with just making life simple. So like if you remember, if a coefficient of variable is one, we don't write it. Right? We don't write it. If it's like 1x, 
We don't write 1x, we write x. If it's 2x, we write the 2, okay? If it's like negative x, we don't write the negative 1 in front of it. We just put the negative in front because it just makes life easier. It's simple. Um, it's cleaner. So the way a horizontal line looks is if it's just y equals, now I just put in b, b is just a number. So if y equals any number, that's going to let you know that it's a horizontal equation. What does it mean? It means that regardless of what x is, y is always going to be whatever that number happens to be. So let's look at one. So y equals 5. So this is saying that regardless of whatever x is, if x is 1, y is 5. If x is 7, y is 5. If x is negative 2.8, y is 5. If x is negative 300 billion, y is 5. So this is just telling you that regardless of what x is, y is always going to be 5. Therefore, it is going to be a horizontal line, okay, at 5. And it's just draw it straight across a 5. It's pretty simple. If y is negative 3, again, the same thing. Regardless of what x is, every, for every value of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, 97, 632,000, negative 421, whatever, it's going to be negative 3. So what we do is we just draw a horizontal line at negative 3. That's it. Don't worry about why those two points are there. I'll show you in a few minutes. All right, so that's a horizontal line. y equals a number is a horizontal line. Then the next one is a vertical line. Now, a vertical line um, looks very different as far as the equation goes. Because instead of it being y equals something like all the other ones we've had, x is now the first thing, and it's equal to a number. That's it. Okay. So what this is saying is, regardless of what y is, x is always going to be that number. So if y is 7, x is whatever it is. If y is negative 4, <clears throat> X is still that same number, not anything different. So regardless of whatever Y is, X is always going to be 3. So if Y is 1, X is 3. If Y is 4, X, X is, is three. 3. If Y is negative 4, X is 3. Thank you, Mrs. Parad. X yeah. is 3. So it would just be a straight line up and down at 3, where X is 3. Same thing, x equals negative 5. <clears throat> no different. Okay? So regardless of what y is, x is always going to be negative 5. So you're just going to go straight up and down at x is negative 5. All right? So it tells you whatever the number is, whatever that number is, you just draw a straight line up and down for that one. So for your homework, what's going to happen is this is a little bit different. This is not the one that's for your homework, but I want to show you how to do a graph. So the way it works is on here, you actually only have to find two points. It will automatically make a line for you. That's where those two points were coming from. So let's say you calculated it as negative 3, 2. Okay. And the next point you calculated was 4, 7. You click there, and it automatically makes a line for you. Okay. So when you're doing your homework, what you need to do is solve for... Uh, the variable, so you, you choose an x, solve for y, and then what you do is do it for two points. Go ahead, click all those two points in on your grid, and it will automatically make the graph for you. If you make a mistake, there's a way to clear it. Um, right here, it says reset, okay? Um, again, whatever it happens to be, it will automatically do that for you. Oh, look, x is negative 6. There we go. There's my graph. So good luck. Reach out to me if you have any trouble. Have a good day. Bye.